Levan Aronian beat Nigel Shot with the black pieces and is now on 5 out of 6. Let's get his thoughts on today's game. Lev, it looked like you were always in control. A crucial win with the black pieces. Couldn't have gone better today? Yeah, somehow uh, I think Nigel uh, was a bit tired after the battle of the sexes. So it was an easier game for me than usual. Right, now you played the night off today and we've barely seen you employ the Sicilian. Uh, but not a common opening choice for you. Give us some insights into your opening prep for today's game. Yeah, I've, I was a night off player till I turned about 20 or 21, I don't remember. And then I kind of uh, quit. And I thought, you know, uh, normally when people get older, they get senile, they like to come back to to the things they were doing. So, <laughs> no, nah, I mean, in all the seriousness, I, I just thought, uh, you know, to play f for, for fun. Uh, I, I don't know much in Nidorf, but normally, uh, Nigel himself avoids it and plays some offbeat lines, which are not that dangerous. So you felt that there was a bit of a hole in Nigel's prep where you realized that he avoids the night off and that's why you went for it? More or less, yeah. Um, because uh, he plays either A4, A3 or some rare lines. That's some good advice for people when they're preparing against their opponents. Um, now, were you expecting the A3 setup? Not really. I thought he would go for either bishop c4, or which uh, he used to play a long, long time ago, or uh, something else. But uh, I checked out this idea. It looks natural. And uh, I, I felt confident to play it. Because the thing is, neither of and uh, the Rui Lopez has very, very similar common ideas especially the, the neither with e5. So I don't need to completely learn, you know, new type of structure. So I can play it by heart. Right, now uh, you said you were also nostalgic for the night off, but I'm sure it involved a lot of uh, preparation as well. Uh, and did that preparation also involve looking at a lot of Maxime's games? Absolutely, many different players. Uh, of modern age uh, defend neither, but Maxim is uh, the one who religiously defends it. And well, since uh, I also play for myself, uh, it helped, you know, because uh, you get to look for the things with white and that's always a good way to prepare for black. Very interesting. At what moment today did you feel that you had a decisive advantage? Yeah, I felt when uh, I played g5, I felt this should be a very difficult position for white to play. And uh, and then, um, okay, uh, maybe he didn't defend in the most precise way, but anyway, position is very unpleasant. Black's play is very natural. Right, and after getting a good position out of the opening and being satisfied with the way things went, did you ever doubt your advantage at any point in the game? No, I thought that maybe I didn't choose the most precise ways at some points, but I thought it should be sufficient with any play because the bishop on e5 is too overwhelming. Right, now earlier in the event you had a draw against Sara and against Maria. Can you give us your thoughts uh, playing them because you don't often play against women players. Yeah, I thought that uh, Maria was playing uh, very well at some point when she, I mean, she managed to get slightly worse because of some mistakes, but then she defended in a very, very nice way. And against Sarah, well, I just uh, blundered that I cannot mate uh, on the eighth square. Oh, on the eighth rank, uh, but uh, I mean, she's having a tremendous tournament, but I think the game she played against me was definitely not uh, a good game for her. Right now, well, you've played more female players here than you would probably play in your entire year put together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, uh, but at the same time, it's kind of difficult because the girls are normally well, well prepared. 
Are you aware that at the last night's Battle of the Sexes, your today's opponent, Nigel, was captaining the men's team, which actually lost to the women's team? Yeah, well, uh, because uh, I couldn't take part, I was too tired after my game. Well, these things happen, you know, when, when you don't recruit the best players for the match. So you think Nigel made a big mistake by not having you on his team? <laughs> yes, yes, and uh, he paid for it fully. Give us your impressions so far about playing in Gibraltar. Uh, yeah, it's always fun, especially when the weather is so good. You know, you you feel that you're in the middle of the summer. So it, it definitely works good for the mood of the players. And uh, I think most of the players are enjoying playing here. And we're at that stage in the event when things are really going to start heating up and uh, getting uh, tougher. So what is can you tell us what is the shift in strategy or thought process? Well, uh, I'm going to try to uh, stay uh, in the aggressive mode so and uh, just follow the chase. The aggressive mode is what the fans love. Thank you for joining us and for your time, Lev. All the best. Thank you. Thank you.